Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Spitfire Mark V's G45 camera gun installation. I'll give you extracts from the 1940-1942 Air Ministry manuals and show you my relevant reworked colour AP diagrams. I hope you find this interesting. Designed and manufactured by the Williamson Company, who were photographic engineers based in London, it was developed from the earlier G42B camera gun, which had been in service with the Royal Air Force for some years. In July 1939, the G45 camera gun was first issued to armament schools and fighter squadrons. The G45 saw service on many aircraft during the war and continued in service at the start of the jet age, being fitted to early jets such as the de Havilland Vampire. The G45 Cine camera gun was produced as a development of the G42B Cine camera, with the intention that it should replace it throughout the service. The G45 was designed primarily to be suitable for all types of installation, whether in gun turrets in bombers, or free gun positions, or fixed gun positions such as the requirement for the Spitfire Mark V. It may be used with a gun or assembly of guns to secure a record of the effect of the firing of the aircraft armament, either in gunnery practice exercises or in actual air combat, and may be used alone to simulate a gun or assembly of guns for purpose of gunnery training. The G45 fitted with a short lens, as shown here, is used for fixed and free gun installations, such as fighter aircraft, and the G45 with an extension lens is used for gun turret installations. Before we go into more detail of the G45 and look at some original wartime footage taken with the camera, here is a description of the camera gun installation specific to the Spitfire Mark V. Provision is made for mounting a G45 camera gun on a bracket attached to a rib on the port plane. Exposure is being made through a hole in the leading edge fillet. It is important to note that in place of a knurled ring which is normally attached to the camera lens, a special adapter flange is fitted to butt against the sponge rubber ring in the leading edge and thus seal a gap between the camera body and the leading edge and prevent the entrance of air. The camera is installed after the leading edge bottom fillet together with the hole cover and is aligned in the same manner as the guns. The hole cover is similar to those over the gun tunnels. The multi-core cable is enclosed in a tubular conduit which extends forward and above the main spar to the rear of the camera. When the camera is removed, the socket end of the cable should be placed in the stowage bracket. A combined footage indicator and exposure control is mounted on a wedge plate in the cockpit above the throttle control and is connected to the electrical circuit by the adjacent socket. The master switch for the camera gun is situated on the side of the fuselage forward of the fuse panel. The air operated switches and terminal blocks for connecting the seven core cable from the camera are fitted to the outside of the shell plating on the port side and access to them is obtained by removing the section of the root end fillets marked electric cons. The G45 camera gun is operated by the gun firing button on the control column spade grip. A succession of exposures being made during the whole time the button is depressed. When cannon are fitted, the cine camera is operated off the cannon firing pipeline. A footage indicator and an aperture switch are mounted on the wedge plate above the throttle lever. The switch enables either the two camera apertures to be selected, the smaller aperture being used for sunny weather. The camera can also be controlled independently by means of an electrical push switch on the control column spade grip below the gun firing control button. Here is a selection of original Spitfire Mark V combat footage 
showing the G-45 camera gun in action during 1942 against the Focke-Wulf 190. And here, a JU-88 over the sea. Here is an attack on shipping off the Dutch coast. Note the lead Spitfire lifting away from the ship after the attack. And here strafing a locomotive over France. Here are the leading particulars for the G45 camera gun. The camera gun uses 16mm standard perforated cine film in spooled lengths of 25 feet that will provide a thousand exposures. The photo sizes were 0 0.26 inches deep by 0 0.36 inch wide. The angle of field was approximately 10 degrees by 7 degrees. The nominal focal length was 2 inches and the lens type was a triplet anastigmat f3.5. The govern taking speed was 16, 18 or 20 frames per second and the nominal shutter speeds were 1 64th of a second to 1 268th of a second. The G45 fitted with the short lens is 2 inches wide, 11 inches long and 4 inches high. The G45 fitted with the extension lens is 2 inches wide, 22.75 inches long and 4 inches high. The 16mm film is first loaded into a light tight magazine in a suitably illuminated dark room and this magazine may then be inserted in daylight into any of the cameras in squadron use provided it is not exposed for a long time to very brilliant sunshine. The G45 is electrically operated, being controlled by the gun firing trigger, and wherever it is mounted on the aircraft structure, its operation and the passage of film may be observed and the exposure time controlled by means of the footage indicator Type 45, which is mounted within the view of the pilot. The mechanism is driven from an electric motor and a claw mechanism draws the film intermittently through the camera gate where each frame is exposed while momentarily stationary by a rotating sector shutter which is synchronized with the claw movement. The speed of the camera mechanism can be regulated to take the separate frames or pictures at the rate of 16, 18 or 20 per second. The shutter can be opened by hand independently of the driving mechanism to facilitate the sighting or focusing of the camera. The G45 camera gun is available in two models for operation on 12 or 24 volt aircraft systems. The Spitfire Mark V using a 12 volt system. The construction of the camera is such that the mechanism is composed of separately removable units or groups of parts. The purpose of this being to facilitate easy removal of any unit for replacement or repair during maintenance operations. Each unit is positively located in its correct position in the body by dowels and sockets. The temperature of the G45 camera is maintained as near as possible at 50 degrees Fahrenheit by a thermostatically controlled electrical body heater and the alternative camera lenses are each provided with a heater to prevent condensation on the front cover glass surfaces 
or interior surfaces of the lens units. These heaters are switched on before the aircraft leaves the ground to dispel any misting already present and are controlled by the master switch on the port side of the cockpit. The lens of 2 inch focal length provided for use with the camera may be one of two types. A short type with a conventional optical system and a distance from the front lens surface to the focal plane of approximately 3 inches the short lens being used within the Spitfire Mark V. The longer lens version would have been used in gun turrets, as I mentioned earlier. Variations in focal length from lens to lens may occur in the lower serial numbers. In such cases, a coloured band is painted round the outside of the lens body. Short lenses, as fitted as Spitfire Mark V, with a focal length between 2.1 and 2.3 inches, were painted with a green band, while short lenses with a focal length between 2.3 and 2.4 inches will be painted with a red band. The footage indicator Type 45 is operated from the camera and records the footage of the film in the magazine as it is passed through the gaze of the camera. An exposure switch on the footage indicator controls the angle of the clear sector in the rotating sector shutter and the exposure received by the film may be set by the pilot to one of two values cloudy for the larger sector and greater exposure and sunny for the smaller sector and lesser exposure. Whilst the G45 is fitted within the inner port main plane of the Spitfire 5 various mountings and adapters were provided to allow the camera to be used in widely different aircraft installations. It could be used in place of a fixed or free gun or in addition to fixed or free guns. It could also be used in place of a gun in many gun turret installations or together with the guns in a turret installation. The G45 system was very flexible whether the guns mounted were Browning or Vickers gas operated gun types. In order that the camera may be loaded by ground crews with ease, wherever it may be disposed in any particular aircraft installation, the magazine may be inserted in the camera either through the lid at the top or through a door at the side. The 7 pin plug through which the various aircraft electrical circuits are connected to the camera wiring system may be fitted to the camera in one of two positions either at the rear or on a panel on the right hand side at the rear of the camera body. A sighting unit and graticle is provided with which to harmonise the field of the G45 camera gun which replaces the aircraft gun. This is so that its axis coincides with the line of sight of that gun. In order that this sighting unit may be used with the camera, whatever its position, ports fitted with removable plugs that are retained by flat springs are provided through which the sighting unit may be inserted, either from the top or from the side. And when in position, a rotating mirror allows a 360 degree rotation of the angle of view. Whether in training or in operations, it was essential that each 25 foot length of film loaded into a magazine and exposed in the camera should bear some distinctive markings so that after processing and during projection the results could be easily and quickly identified. The G45 titling unit was provided for this very purpose. In order to avoid any possible confusion during processing and editing, the necessary information is recorded photographically on a short length of about 14 frames of the 25 foot length of film loaded in each magazine. This written title would be processed together with the gunnery record to which the details refer and is projected onto the screen before the gunnery record flashes into view. Here's an example. The Spitfire's armourer would be responsible for titling the film. 
First the loaded magazine will be placed in a compartment of the titler and the details required to be recorded such as the pilot's name, camera and magazine number, aircraft type and number, date, weather conditions and nature of the exercise. These would all be written in black pencil on a ground sell-on tablet which slipped into a holder in the front of the titler. The clockwork driven mechanism of the titler is then operated to expose the film on which an image of the tablet illuminated from the rear has been focused by the titler lens. As I said earlier the G45 was fitted to many types of British aircraft throughout the war and beyond. So here's a couple of views of the G45 camera gun installation in the Hawker Hurricane Mark I. And here we have two views of the G45 installation in the nose of the de Havilland Mosquito Mark VI. Before I finish, once again, here's some footage of the G45 camera gun in action whilst fitted to the Spitfire Mark V during 1942. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing and also ring the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.